In last week's episode, we got our electric motor parts back and reinstalled. This week, we're picking up where we left off. Let's get this motor running. Yay! All right, now we gotta make the wires. Make the wires. So we gotta find all the wire tools. Two years ago, we purchased a hurricane damaged boat with the dream of sailing her around the world. Together with our kids, we've been learning, laughing, and working to make this dream come true. This is the story of our adventures on a sailboat named Spoon Drifter. Give me some of that wire. Come on, hurry up, give me the wire. It's heavy stuff, isn't it? How many, how many um, things, how many things? Undo it, so I got like six feet or so over here. That's probably good. Is that enough? Yeah. Good job. Now we're gonna make the wire. Go from here to there. And then let's make it from here on. Always makes me nervous. Why? Because it's so inflexible that, you know, even an eighth of an inch too long or too short can make, too short for sure can make a difference, but even too long can make a difference. You know? Yeah. I'm not sure how the audio is going to be because the fan is blowing. Now, one thing I need is a razor knife, which I don't know that I have in here. Let's see if there's a razor knife in here anywhere. Oh, it's on a tape measure. Yeah. And right next to it is a razor knife. Good. And I probably need a pair of pliers from the back. Well, there's these, but they don't go together. Handles are weird. are called slip joint pliers because they slip on the joint to make them bigger. How's that? Learn something today, huh? You're getting all the wonderful fan. How does it feel? It feels awesome. You tell me, describe how wonderful it feels. Well, I think that our viewers are going to be unhappy with the noise. they were here, they would feel empathy <laughs> for the heat. It was a heat index, heat index of 109 today outside, so hence even with the air conditioner in the boat, it's like barely, barely keeping up. It's actually pretty nice over there where it actually is, but over here where you need it, there's no airflow, so it tells us how much thermal gain we have through the so one of these is going to be for the left, one for the right, and they're different size lugs. So, so you got to make it sure you get the right one on the right. Got to get the right one on the right thing, right end. Beautiful. So you notice there's two orange lines on there. You double crimp this one on each of those sets of orange lines and then I like to rotate it 90 degrees because one side's square one side's rounded and what that does is kind of rounds all four sides for a nice crimp. We're going to do this one on the bottom. Now those are all connected so you have to be really careful don't touch that to itself. Right? There's no ground here. Hey, you're just making me nervous. <laughs> Throwing those wires all over the place. If you don't know why I'm so nervous about the electrical, watch the episode where we had an electrical fire while hooking up the batteries. That would be a lot of Super nice. Awesome. It's a rare day that we don't hear from at least five or six of our ten kids. So, I'm going to go that direction right there. Don't let it touch something it shouldn't. There's nothing here that it can touch that's a problem. I promise. I need four heat shrinks cut. Thank you. 
Does it works fit? just right. Yes. Yay. All right. Now if I can figure out how to. Working backwards, not being able to see. Right. Mm. Flat washer. Lock washer. No. All that, and I didn't put any Vaseline on these. How come, dear? Uh -huh. Okay, I cannot squat in this position. I can't stay like this. I don't know how I'm still so fat working on this boat. Where's <laughs> <laughs> that fast one? It doesn't matter what you put on as long as it's some sort of a corrosion protection. Some are just probably a little easier to work with and better than others. Corrosion X spray that we bought is supposed to be pretty good stuff, but it seems pretty thin to me. But secure, solid. Another day working on putting this motor back together and hooking it up to the batteries and it's still hot so the fans blowing and Todd has a nifty new tool it's kind of a mess out here one of these all right he's in Back. Sounds like the girls are back. Are you back? Yes. Abigail tripped over a ledge and cut her toe. Oh no. You okay, Abigail? We need band aids. Isn't there band aids in the boat? Yes. Where? I think they're over in the drawer. Let's go look. But okay. I Get a paper towel. Get some water on it wash it off and then I'll come look at it, okay? It worked. It worked. That time it worked. I'm using a terminal block because the wires from the motor aren't long enough. So they have to be essentially spliced. And this is a better way of doing a splice than putting a butt connector in the line. As we saw with the uh, stuff from all the previous owners. Alright, well, I'm going to leave you to that and we're going to go look at Abigail's toe. We'll look at Abigail's toe. Make sure you get it on film. <laughs> Abigail's not so sure she wants to share this on film. It's a lot. Is it a lot? Got it cleaned up. It's just skinned at the top. All right, let's put a band-aid on it. Ready to do school work? No, I'm not done over here. All right, we need to read this book. We are reading this book for school. It has been a long day, and it is dark in here because it's so cloudy out. Let's see how far Todd's gotten. Well, the motor is now wired. Whoop, whoop. Yay. Um, what I'm putting in right now is the shunt for the current sensor. From here, it splits into two for the two different solenoids. So this, this would be the port side engine controller. This would be the starboard engine side controller. So this comes down and goes over the starboard. 
this one comes down and goes over to the port. And I can still stand in here and walk in here and I'm not tripping over any wires. Maybe tomorrow we can actually hook up the uh, controller to the motor and turn it on inside here. Wouldn't that be cool? Mm -hmm. Everything's going apart. What's happening? Research. Before we put it back together, you gotta know what you're supposed to do. Well, I'm just double checking everything, and I, I gotta make a call to Delta Q about the chargers. This pile is getting bigger and bigger. It decreased some. There's a lot more wires connected there. This is the throttle wire and the display. Right now I have to hook, I have to create some water for the raw water pump. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I'm assuming that if I put too much in, it'll come out that side too. <laughs> we'll see if half a gallon is enough here. Yeah, there we go. Get it on without losing too much water. So normally these would be hooked up to... This would be hooked up to your seawater intake and output. And this is what Scott, the engineer, told you to do. Yep. He said if I do this, I could, I could run it almost indefinitely if I wanted to, but... It just lubricates the uh, raw water pump splines is all it's really doing. All right, step one is done. Step two, I've hooked up the throttle quadrant. I've hooked up the display monitor. Okay, if you're gonna talk to the camera, talk to the camera, because you're moving all over the place and you're so close right now, you're not even gonna focus. Stop it. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the shaft or not down there, but that's what'll turn. So okay. everything's hooked up. Everything's What's hooked the up? plan to bail if, if, like, what do you do if it's not working or something's wrong? Like if it starts sizzling and getting ready to blow? Yeah. Um, run like heck, I guess. No, is there like a master off switch? Okay, yeah. Right there. That's the one. The off switch. All right. All right. So. So have you turned that Where's on? Our... No, it's not on I'm yet. I'm, con I'm nervous. Are you nervous? I'm super nervous. I'm super nervous. Okay. When I turn on the key, I'm supposed to hear a click of the relays. Should we see? Should we do it? They clicked. So now I should be able to turn the quadrant and start the motor spinning not going at all. Nope, it's not going at all. Something's wrong. Maybe I have to do this first. It's um, the display for programming mode. I programmed it for the battery size, but I didn't do the throttle part. Fail number one. We should have gone with a diesel. <laughs> Something is making noise. There's a green light. It's blinking a code. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See if it tells me what four blinking codes mean. This is Todd in uh, Rockport. I'm trying to uh, fire up this motor. Okay, we haven't heard back from the technician engineer guy. But Todd thinks he found what's wrong. What's going on? Well, on each one of these motor controllers, there's a plus and a B plus. So the plus is right here, and the B plus is down here. One diagram, it has it running to the B plus. But on the other motor, it's running to the positive. 
and I didn't notice there wasn't a B in front of it. So I figured B plus, B plus, they were the same, but apparently on one motor it's supposed to go to the B plus, but on the other motor it goes to the plus, not the B plus. Ah, this is probably Scott. Probably the issue. Mm -hmm. All right, should we try this again and see what happens? Oh, hold on to your pants. Turning the power on, getting ready to strum my bass guitar. I got to turn it all the way up first, like Michael J. Fox and Back to the Future, right? Let's not get that kind of noise feedback. Click. And... Oh my word, it works! That's at like 31% power right there. It's really hard to only give it a little bit of gas when you're in the walk out of the water and there's no resistance on it. It just like wants to just go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we have power, we have motor. This is an exciting milestone. Thank you to all of our crew members and subscribers for cheering us on. Not a member of the crew yet? Click the link in the description below. Todd's got a new toy. <laughs> we know it works, but we're gonna keep looking at it.